Alrighty, today we're going to talk about the top five most underrated spells in Warhammer 3. Now, talking about the OP spells, uh, it's really hard to tell which one's more OP, and also it's a boring conversation in my opinion, because they're very obvious there in like every game ever. Underrated means strong, but you don't really see them, and I think we should see more of them. Coming in at number five will be Crack's Call from the Skaven. At only 15 wins of magic, 100% armor piercing, and 35 damage, this wind spell is actually rather impressive. Probably the reason you don't see it so much is poison wind globes are plenty efficient at killing anything and everything in front of them, but I have been playing around with it a little bit in some of my builds, and I even think, wow, I could just shot those council guard right in the back. Anyway, I have been thinking that if globes get their much needed nerf, that this spell will come back into fruition. You see these bestigor herds are clumped up on my front line, and zoop, half HP on one, one third off the other in one simple easy spell. Only 15 wins of magic, it's very, very good. Compare it to like Overcasted Pendulum, and I think you'll like the results. And no risk of overcasting your caster. Coming in at number four on our list is Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is in, uh, it's around, it's Thunderbolt. It's in the Lore of Heavens. It only costs six wins of magic, six, when Wind Blast costs eight. And Wind Blast is in our worst spells because on the exact same, uh, wind of magic for two less you can get 672 armor piercing damage with some explosion in there or you could have 16 zero percent armor piercing Rana's thunderbolt is far superior it just does a lot a lot a lot a lot of damage for about the same cost as fireball i mean you have to wait for clumps or for the front lines to engage but that's not really that hard of a time to find especially at six winds of magic and a low cooldown you'll get plenty of them out. Paired with Common of Cassandra, I think that uh, the Lord of Heavens is really good at clearing out any hordes you may be facing. Around its Thunderbolt, give it a shot. Coming in at number three, I do think Curse of Honor here is wildly underappreciated by people. Area of Effect, minus 24, 24 melee, defense, and attack stats. Uh, 11 wins of magic, I did say it's Area of Effect. 20 second duration, pretty good cast range. You don't even have to overcast it. That is a very nice spell. It can help with cav engagements on the side specifically, but it can also be nice for single entity duels. You could also make it a larger cast area for an overcast of only 14 wins of magic, but I generally think the 11 is plenty, plenty worth it. I had a pretty infamous game where two feral cold ones and a cold one spear rider beat three mornfang cav because I cast curse of honor here on the blob, and it was really funny. So I think the spell is underappreciated. A lot of buff and debuff spells aren't valued as highly as I think they should be, but healing is really strong in the game right now, so I think that dominates most people's thought. Um, maybe if healing gets nerfed, we might see the grand days of Curse Honor here return. Coming in at number two for this list of underrated spells is Chill Wind of the Lore of Dark. Lore of Dark is dominated by Soul Stealer, and I don't see why not. It does a pretty good amount of damage, all things considered, but it also provides excellent healing. But Chill Wind has a ridiculously fast cast time. 100% um, armor piercing damage, 16 damage in the line, so it's the same as Wind Blast, but it does 100% armor piercing. And it also spams Spiteful Conjuration, so it's minus 15 armor globally to the enemy as you're just spamming the spell over and over again. And I pause like as soon as the game started. Zoop. It's out. It's almost impossible to dodge. It does a good amount of damage. Those are Black Guard of Nagaron and took out about one-fifth to one-quarter of their HP for five wins magic. Chill Wind is actually pretty insane. It's just on the same lore as Soul Stealer. All right, and coming in at the top of our list is the Ogre Kingdom's Lore of the Great Moss spell, Brain Gobbler. Brain, Brain Gobbler only costs four wins of magic, minus 16 leadership, which is a pretty large amount. If you overcast it, it just has an extended duration. Um, it is single target but it can take out units uh, that with low leadership faster, charging the ogre's passive that they get for attacking units that are routing. So getting them to route even faster, you can see here, this wolf rat is now breaking. Um, discouraged by ability minus 16, so it wouldn't even be breaking yet without the ability. Now wolf rats are the best case example for me because they're very low leadership, but think about it with things like frenzy, you can disable the frenzy faster. Uh, get rid of their ITP so your units can start causing fear, lowering their leadership even further and getting run away, lowering their melee stats so they start losing in combat and stuff. Things like that. But Brain Goblin can be rather useful for routing off things of low leadership even faster, getting the ogres through the front line and really charging up that army passive faster than you ever thought possible. I do think it's undervalued. Um, it's a really good spell, I think. I mean, minus 16 leadership for four ones of magic is pretty insane. You could also do things like 
route off a lord that's just on the edge of things, or if someone's trying to come back to the fight, you can cast it on them as they're coming back, like reinforcements or something like that. You could also cast it uh, minus 16 leadership to get demons to start crumbling, right? Because how high is demon leadership? Where are you, demons of chaos? There you are. Demons of chaos, I mean, Nurglings have 50 leadership, 60 on blood letters, that kind of stuff. So 16 off the top to get them to start crumbling. And once they start crumbling, it's, it's GG. I mean, Furies, geez, Furies have 35 leadership. 16 brings them down to 19 leadership before they start crumbling. I think Brain Gobla is a pretty insane spell and uh, undervalued currently. So I do hope to see Ogre players taking it in the future. Now it's niche. It's not as easy as like Spirit Leech or Fireball where you just point at a target, do damage, haha, you did it. But in the right context, Brain Gobla can be pretty insane. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.